good. Hello and welcome to a Tennis Channel special, Indian Wells Classics. I'm Brian Weber. The 1995 Indian Wells men's singles final featured the two best players in the world, Pete Sampras and Andre Agassi. This match took place just as the rivalry was truly heating up. Sampras was the defending champion and finished 1994 as the world's number one player, but Agassi began 1995 impressively, starting the year with a win over Sampras in the finals of the Australian Open. Looking to make a splash in primetime, the tournament scheduled this big-time final for a Monday night. Let's get you right out to the 1995 Indian Wells men's singles final between Pete Sampras and Andre Agassi. This is the dream matchup, number one versus number two, the rivalry of the 90s. Andre Agassi beat Pete Sampras six weeks ago for the Australian Open title. Now they stand together at the top of the tennis world. Agassi's rising fast, but Sampras wants to hold on to number one. But I'm not conceding so easily. I mean, he's, he's got to win and play well. It's a duel under the sun. The two best players in the world meet for the Newsweek Champions Cup. He is the showman from Las Vegas, but he seems to be ready to put the glitz and glamour image on the back burner for the moment to focus on becoming number one in the world. In his way, it's Pete Sampras. He's already won five Grand Slam titles at 23 years old. This is the Newsweek Championship Champions Cup final match. Best of five set from the Hyatt Grand Champions at Indian Wells. Hello and warm greetings everybody. Cliff Dreisel alongside the fire one Fred Stolle. Welcome to our Monday night coverage. It is Andre Agassi and Pete Sampras in a dream final. Let's face it, Andre Agassi going into the US Open, unable to find himself a spot in the top 16 seeds, Fred. And now he is breathing down Sampras as a potential number one in the world. Agassi has played the last six months, Cliff, uh, like uh, Pete Sampras played the first six months of last year, and now it's a fight for the number one spot. But if things go this way today, then Pete Sampras is still going to be number one at the end of the day anyway. If Sampras wins today, the 470-point difference is there. If Agassi wins, he's still ahead, Sampras, by 181 points. And then the battle goes down to Key Biscayne. But uh, if you think about the Australian Open, that match was decided pretty much by one point. If you remember, Sampras had a couple of set points in that tiebreaker mm -hmm. in the third set. Hit an unbelievable first serve. Agassi was right on top of it with that forehand that touched the tape. That changed things around. We've seen some tremendous tennis here this week. This one's going to be even better. There'll be electricity on the court today. That yeah. is for sure, Fred. There's electricity in the air down there. Let's go down to Mary Carrillo. Cliff, that's for sure. This isn't uh, your normal Monday afternoon in Indian Wells. It's going to be a terrific match. Fred mentioned about the Australian Open. In that match, Pete Sampras served at only 51%. You can't do that against the best returner in the game, Andre Agassi. This court is even slower than it was in Australia. I think that, too, will favor Agassi. Andre has been playing very clean. He hasn't dropped a set yet here at the, uh, at the Newsweek Champions. Pete has been much more up and down. He's gone to three sets a couple of times already. But remember, Pete Sampras in a five-set match, only has to play three clean sets, has to serve well for three sets. He's probably got him in, in it, in him. All I know for sure, this is going to be a war. It is a terrific day for tennis here at Indian Wells this late afternoon. It is 76 degrees, 33% humidity, eight miles an hour. There's no chance of rain in the air, and as this match progresses, conditions may get a little heavier, and that might help Andre Agassi. It has been a terrific field here. Only four players didn't make it to the round of 16. There's the draw as of the last eight. Sampras taken on Edberg. Edberg a former number one. Becker a former number one, taken on Agassi in the semifinals, a pretender to number one. And Pete Sampras, of course, is number one in the world so another dream tournament here following up on the Australian Open which was a tremendous start to the year for the sport of tennis first thing you notice out here today Andre Agassi has his Pirates headgear on Cliff he hasn't worn it all week looks as though he's ready to steal some gold out here on this first prime time final he hasn't had that headgear on since the Australian I believe Pete Sampras spent a lot of his formative years out here in the 
state of California so this could be a second home for him he's ranked number one in the world he's made over 12 million so far Whoa. and he's only 23 <laughs> Won five Grand Slam titles. Oh. Like what a pretty wild start for Sampras. A double fault and then a uh, good forehand return from Agassi forces the error. Calls Tampa, Florida home now, Sampras. Yeah. There's the Pirates look. Love 31st game. Ah. I guess he's number two in the world as of now, but timing just uh, few points away from taking over the number one spot he's made over eight million that's dwarfed by his enormous amount of money that he's made off the court eight. his endorsement earnings are staggering in fact both of them tennis players are so recognizable aren't they 15 30 first game goes to the forehand you're going to find that a lot today Sampras even though uh, Agassi realizes that fact that on the big point, Sampras is going to be there. And, uh, but Sampras says, hey, if he can hit my serve at 100, and that one was 123 mile an hour, if he can return and hit it for winner, that's just too tough. I've still got to go to the spot where I think Agassi is most vulnerable. Oh. Sampras is about the only player out there, I feel, in today's game that can compete with Agassi from the baseline as far as strength and hitting winners. And he just showed you right there. If he cranks up on this forehand and meets it well, doesn't move his head, gets the racket through, he can win it. There's the big ace right down the tee again. One goes to love, 118 mile an hour ace from Sampras. First set, this is the best of five setter. It's Pete Sampras, the top player in the world, trying to hang on to that position, and Andre Agassi is breathing down his neck. Just a reminder that this time of the year last year, Agassi did not play particularly well. He had just come off wrist surgery. He made his move in the second half of the year. Meantime, Pete Sampras was flying. He won seven tournaments going into the French championships. He dominated men's tennis. And then he suffered injuries during and after Wimbledon and had to sit out for six weeks last summer. Oh. Oh. Shadows coming over the court. It's rather late in the afternoon and uh, cool conditions for play down there. As we mentioned that uh, this may possibly uh, help Agassi with the return if Sampras misses first serves, but also uh, the bullet-like conditions on the first serve. If Sampras gets them in, this is going to be a thriller. I was just down on the court a couple of minutes ago, guys, and the photographers sitting in the, that photographer's pit are upset that these shadows are uh, throwing shadows and making it difficult for them to oh. take good shots of the guys. They figure they only have a couple of games in this match to yeah. shoot them. <laughs> Mr. Game point coming up for Agassi. Andre Agassi, we know uh, the return of serve is the strength and the ground strokes. He showed us that with Becker yesterday. Weakness is the volleys. Technically, he's okay on the volleys, but the low volleys, if he doesn't get a high volley when he goes in behind a decent passing shot, that's when he makes some errors. Game, Agassi. 
Well, both players in their opening service game have finished up the game with an ace. One game more. One game more, first set. It's so important for Sampras to serve well in this match, and here's how he has done, Fred. First serve points one, 85 percent of the time. That's pretty good. And second serves well. He'd like it a little bit better than 52 percent. He's got to do a bit better than that today against Agassi. Sampras has to do better on second serve is right here because this man's return of serve points one 55 of 152 that's pretty darn good off a of first serve 36 percent but look what happens if you miss your first serve 64 percent return on second serves oh. about Becker yesterday being a little impatient against um, Agassi. This man has a little bit more margin of error on the ground stroke. Sampras I'm talking about now. But when he gets it, he can rifle them for winners. And that one topspin inside that service box. Great shot. <laughs> Thirty fifteen, one game more. It is going to be dangerous for him if he keeps staying back like this, isn't it? Sampras always talks about when facing Agassi, you have to control the center of the court. And if Pete starts getting on a run from the baseline, it'll be difficult for him to dominate Agassi. So I think it all starts and stops right there for Sampras. That was a 122, his second ace of the day. I mean, it, it's all up to Sampras's toss almost this whole match, you know, as we know how good Agassi is and how effective he'll be on the return. But if Sampras continues to uh, to serve like that, there won't be much between these two. And Sampras should yeah, win. Yeah, Sampras. Sampras holds on behind another outstanding serve game and he leads two games to one. First set. It's under Agassi trying to take home a big prize money check here. One point eight million dollars in all. Sampras leads the match by two games to one. Two hundred and fifty five thousand dollars goes to the winner. Loser today will take home a consolation prize of one hundred and thirty five thousand. Take a look at the points also three forty against two hundred and forty three. And that is as important to these players today because this is the battle for number one. Agassi took out Sampras in the final of the Australian Open. He took out Michael Chang to win the San Jose tournament. Oh, yes. 
Only oh. match he's lost is to the young Swede, Thomas Enquist, and that was in uh, Philadelphia. And he took care of Enquist here in a night match earlier in the week. That gives him a 19 and 1 record for the year. Terrific start. Oh. Sails that one 30-15. Footwork not too good there for Pete Sampras as we look at uh, his scouting report. Sampras, of course, with the uh, the big serve, backhand returner serve, and that running forehand passing shot that uh, we've seen him hit so many times. Weaknesses? Well, I, I couldn't think you of anything. Find something. Oh, yeah, you don't. Well, what could I say? Well, the, the fact that he talks to you or something like that—is that, is that a, a mental weakness? <laughs> no, I think that Pete Sampras. Uh, you could say that sometimes uh, in a situation he might be mentally out of it. Not here though, because. Sampras has stated the fact here that, hey, Andre Agassi has to play well to beat me here. I am not going to give up the number one spot easily. He has got a break point here. And remember, as well as he serves, any break of serve in a set could be enough. Miss hit return. I was going to say, Mary, maybe inconsistency on the serve return could qualify as a weakness for Sam. I was speaking with Brad Gilbert, Agassiz's coach, yesterday, and he felt coming into this match that he liked Agassiz's chances because he didn't think Pete was getting a, a lot of, you know, a consistent number of clean returns. He has a little more margin of error than uh, Boris Becker does yesterday. That one was a mishit, as you mentioned. Anything in the center of the court, Agassiz's going to deal with. Wide. And I do not see any effort from Sampras yet to chip and charge and to try to get in and finish the points off quickly. He's not going to do that against Agassi too often. That's why I, I think he's game plan against Agassi. He doesn't mind trading ground strokes with Agassi and working his way into the net. So a chopper upstairs and uh, Agassi. Trying to figure out what it's going to do before he throws the ball up. Game point, Agassi. Game, Agassi. Again, both those backhand returns far too short. Watch these two shots from Sampras here. There's the first one. Uh, look at that. Much too short there. And that's the second shot. And Agassi unleashes that two-handed back in. That's an easy shot for him. Watch it again. It's right in the block hole for him. Right there. Shoulder turn. And he just loves that one right there. Body at an angle when he makes contact with that ball as he leans forward and into it. Good lesson. Two games all. That's the exact shot, that forehand. That won the Australian Open for him. It was a set point that Sampras had in a tiebreaker in the third set. Agassi picked it. He knows he goes there on the big points, and he hit another one right that forehand, right down the line. you do about that he just reacted so quickly to the ball you know Sampras's movements are so much more casual looking and languid compared with Agassi Agassi you see all the work he did to get behind that ball and blast it and now he's got himself a chance at love 30 And here are three break points for Sampras. He's been at love 30 before, correct me if I'm wrong, Fred, but and came back. Now he is down love 40 with three break points. He's down love 30 in his opening service game right. of the match. <laughs> S 
saves one break point. Agassi had 21 break points against Sampras in that Australian Open four set final. And he won five of them. Sampras can get himself in a hole against Agassi. Now here's a big chance. Sampras in that final only had four break points as compared to Agassi's 21 and connected with two of them. That's why he has the problem for Sampras as of now. He's at under 40% of first serve percentages. Still a break point for Agassi. The shadows got to play a big part. They're coming over very quickly. They'll be gone. It'll be a, a nice court to play in very cool conditions in about 15 minutes. Oh, okay. Big return Agassi. winner from Agassi. He gets the break. He'll serve leading by three games to two. First set. Best of five sets. Championship match of the Newsweek from Indian Well. Agassi has a break three games to two in the first set. We talked about the Australian Open and Fred we've already talked about this bottom line break points one as you can see five of 21 for Agassi but the second serve points one also a very telling total aren't they. Well it has been the, the way this week as well Cliff that's where Agassi has been great second serve points one and the return of serve points one. That's just uh, been a very clean that match that stats there shows you there was a great match because there's more winners than unforced errors hit by both players. That's been the way they that was the way they played their semi-final matches yesterday. So this best of five sets. Well we hope it keeps going in the same way. There you go. The shadows are tough. I uh, mentioned that just a game or so ago. And that's because the ball gets into the sunlight, into the shadows. So that was a problem Agassi had in his last service game. He has it now. 15 minutes and that'll all be gone though. You might be able to check as a viewer at home just where that ball goes when it gets up a certain height over the net. Sampras in the shadows now. Agassi in the sun. Again, a miss hit like that, that kind of a shank shot, I would also attribute to the uh, shadows the and, shadows. The, and yeah. the sun, yeah. Big point coming up. I guess he's got the break already. Sampras has got to find a way back. Remember, Sampras won the first set in Australia. Turned out to be the only set he won. Dior. Full stretch. He was a little far back, Sampras. He wasn't in great position for this. I don't think he, he did enough work to get himself in a good volleying position, and he paid the price. Agassi's drilling it nice. Look where he was, really, back at the tee. Hesitated before he went in there, Sampras, because it was not a clean hit, the approach. Game point Agassi's won three points in a row. He was down, love 30. It. That was just luck for Sampras to still be around in this game because Agassi was very well lined up to make that ball connect. Matter of inches, yeah, this really. sport, you can say that. We 
That one with yesterday when Agassi admitted that uh, he got a good call over Becker that saved him in that first set. Pulled on it a little too much, Agassi, and pulled it wide. That great running that forehand sense. from Sampras, when we always talk about, is what sort of opened up the point for him and gave him another chance to break Agassi. This is the one that sort of split open the point. Pretty passive rally, <laughs> relatively speaking, from these two. Sampras. Until all of a sudden, he got himself a, a good-looking ball. Second break point for Sampras. It yeah, drops back on Agassi's side, and we're back even. Three games all. Very important game for both players there because Agassi needed it to consolidate that break. Sampras had a couple of opportunities, and now they're back. Back on even Steven. And look at the shadows here. It's very tough to pick up balls coming now for, for Agassi because he's the one that's got the sun in his eyes, and he's got to look at Sampras coming down with 120 mile an hour first serves. <laughs> Talk about Pete Sampras being the most complete player in tennis, and I really firmly believe that. The one shot that he doesn't have, though, is that Edberg backhand chip approach. Off the second serve, exactly, yeah. Or off any short ball. He used to have that shot, but Gullickson changed that a little bit more to the, the topspin backhand to give him a little more margin for error. Three years ago, he did play that shot occasionally. <laughs> Tim Gullickson, Pete's coach, is back home in Chicago watching this. He, uh, he and Pete speak all the time. And Pete has pretty much resigned himself to the fact that uh, his coach and good buddy will be pretty much away from tennis for this season. Hopefully in good shape to come back next year. Got it. I think the bottom line on Sampras really is that he's proven time and again that he doesn't have to play his very best tennis to win. He doesn't have to be 100%. And here he played one or one volley too many really before he finally spiked it away. Game point. If there's one weakness I, I think in Pete's game right now it's it's an emotional one that he misses his uh, his buddy. Great oh, boy. No weakness in that game, none at all, and he takes the lead four Sampras games to three on serve. They've traded breaks in the first set. <laughs> Sampras has a four game to three lead. We were talking about Sampras's coach, Tim Gullix, and he's not here, of course, as we've told you, but interim coach Paul Anacone is at Luke Jensen's with him. Paul, what kind of uh, lessons did you learn from Australia and you're applying them today? Uh, well, I think Pete needs to be a little bit more aggressive from the baseline with Andre. Obviously, Andre's playing real well and very confident right now. It's tough to stay back with him, but I think right now they're both trying to feel their way into the match, and uh, hopefully Pete will get a little bit more aggressive as the match goes on. Well, they've played in so many big matches in the last few months, the end of last year and, of course, the Australian Open. These guys were in both separate locker rooms, really fired up for this match. Did you feel the intensity? Yeah, I think obviously when you get the number one, number two playing each other, I think there's a, a lot of pride on the line. They both want to win real badly, and uh, but it's, I think it's going to be a, a great match, and I think there's a lot to look forward to even after this match. Well, thanks, Paul. Back to you, Cliff. Thanks a lot, Luke. I think that's fair to say. Enjoy this match, but there is a lot more to look forward to because this rivalry will continue. There is... Nobody really on the horizon right now that's in the category with these two heavyweights. It's game point here for Agassi to level things in the first set. Casual volley there and he pushed it wide. We talked about the weaknesses uh, with Agassi. That one uh, was not a difficult shot, but he just took it, treated it too casually and pushed it out. It's so unusual that Agassi because he's been playing so cleanly, he's had more unforced serves and winners so far in the match. That is not at all as he played at the Australian. Uh. 
Broken string. He broke a string, but he hit the winner. One incredible effort, that one. The string popped as he made the shot, but it had enough pace and it was in the right spot, so I guess he couldn't track it down. Yeah. Charlie Passarell's got to be very happy, though, Cliff, here. This is prime time, and he didn't know on a Monday afternoon how things would work out. All the box holders were bought the seats, and this place is packed. 11,500 seats, and there's not a one to be had. Brad Gilbert is watching. He's under Agassi's coach now, and has he done a lot for him? Just about everybody gives him credit for a turnaround. What I'm talking about with Agassi, I mean, normally his winners have been much bigger than his errors, and that the opposite is true right now. Oh. Oh. Against Becker yesterday, he only had nine errors. He's got more than that already in the first set. Oh. And there's another one. Deuce. That's his only double fault so far today, Agassi. Sampras has also served one. Nervous game for Agassi, hasn't it? You see, he's telling himself to calm down. He's looking right at Brad Gilbert, who's right behind the court, about 50 feet away from Agassi. Well, that and he knows what Gilbert. By that that volley at 40, love that he just yeah. dumped, played very casually and went wide. It just shows you that in this uh, level of tennis, when you play one and number two in the world, you can't miss easy shots. Oh, he came through with a big one at the right time there, though, and. He's back even at Deuce. He lost four straight points to get to that break point. They've both broken once. They both had three chances to break. <laughs> the shadows are gone, as you can see. Well, lifts up on that backhand side sometimes, Sampras. Did on that one, and again the footwork. He sort of hesitated on that return of serve as to whether to take a backhand or a forehand, and he got it in the center of the court again. Was put under pressure right from the start. Game point. He got it. It clipped the line, and it's back at Deuce. We talked about the running forehand being a strength of. Uh, Pete Sampras, boy, he really had to thread the needle on this one because of the framed return of serve, miss hit, and he anticipates this one cross court. Agassi looks for the easy volley down the line. Look how high that ball went over Agassi's racket. He couldn't have reached that one even if he'd have jumped for it. A chance to serve for 5 3. Ace. Ha! That's his third. Balances Sampras's three aces. <laughs> You'd have believed that he could serve as many as Sampras in this match. Longest game of this opening set. <laughs> Reminder, he had 40 love in this game. Interesting play here, Freddie just w made this approach shot right down the middle instead of going for the wide shot. Gutsy second serve it was too, but it gave Sampras an opportunity to have a crack at a passing shot, but he's very positive on this volley. I guess he doesn't want this one to come back. Well, aggravating that isn't the guy comes in, he's not supposed to be able to volley too well and he crisps one away. <laughs> The 
again. Agassi. Again lifting up the backhand side a little bit and there's the game to Four Agassi. Now Pete Sampras used to have a two handed just like Agassi did but when he was 14 years old his tutor and mentor at that time and he Dr. Pete Fisher decided that uh, he should go with a one handed backhand because they figure you couldn't volley too well. They said no two handed player volleys well enough to win Wimbledon for example and that's what he set his sights on. The other thing that he used to do in those days was play up always in the junior tournaments for better competition tougher competition it sure paid off four games off oh. Oh. few unforced errors off that backhand that one that he's lifted up off and uh, puts it up in the air he's looking for a three quarter court depth on that bouncing up high to Agassi so Agassi can't really hit it for a winner but he's made a few errors 15 unforced errors in total Fred We saw a few of those topspin lobs yesterday and they were devastating against Boris Becker but that one was the first one he's tried against Sampras. You'll see some more of them as this match goes. I spoke earlier about how Sampras does not have to play 100% ball to to be the best to win titles that first Wimbledon he won clip a couple of years ago he wasn't even sure before the as the fortnight was beginning whether he was going to play it or not because he had a bad shoulder and he won the thing. Oh yeah. A beautiful smash. 40 15. I guess he anticipated where that smash was uh, was going. But it's just sheer power. Sampras again thinking, well, okay, I'm going to whack this as hard as I can hit it. If he can get it back, it's just too tough a shot. Agassi was there. Didn't make it. He's not close enough in to attempt that shot again. He ran backwards to make that yeah, instead of closing on the angle that you're supposed to do when you get that shot down the line is cut the angle, go the other way. On that particular occasion, Sampras came back. And of course, it made it a very difficult play to play that drop volley. Still game point. Game and the service winner gives him game number nine. It's five Sampras games to four. Games. Sampras, they're on serve. One break apiece so far in the match. It's best of five at the Newsweek. It is exciting for tennis that Andre Agassi is so close to becoming the number one player in the world. We asked him just how exciting it is to be there. You know, it is for me for a lot of reasons. I mean, a year ago today, I was ranked 32 in the world, and, and, and I was wondering if I'd ever hit the tennis ball the same again. You know, so, I mean, for me to be out here competing for the best, I mean, I'd be happy just to be top 10 right now a year ago, if you would ask me. And so it's like every emotion I'm having out there is a great one. And, and whether I'm fighting for number one or number one, I hopefully am going to try to maintain that perspective of just what it means to be a part of a, a great rivalry, a great sport, and, and, and to try to keep adding something to it, keep improving, keep feeling good. But I have to say that I'm having a blast right now trying to catch Pete. And it shows in his game. One of the things that Brad Gilbert says, you've got to have fun playing tennis, and that is so true. So many players try to fight it. Well, there was a time about three years ago where we questioned the commitment that Andre Ad Agassi had to the game in uh, some of the matches that he played, and Gilbert's got rid of that. He said it took about three months, and they sat down and they talked about things, and now he used to like to use that word that. Uh, a lot of the young players use focused, and he is focused now. Well, 
different type of backhand that one. That was a slice backhand return. So that ball stays a little bit low. The unforced errors there, 17 unforced errors and nine of them from the backhand side. That one, though, kept a little bit lower and Agassi hit that two-fisted backhand into the top of the tape. <laughs> Set points for Sampras. He was robbed by the net there. That ball was good all the way until it hit the tape, until it hit the net and bounced out. Saves one. That's definitely a Gilbert move. You wouldn't find uh, Agassi playing this way up until he was coached by Gilbert. He goes in, takes the risk and says, pass me and gets over there. He hit a good approach on the forehand side and knew that he just had to play that volley into the court. He took his time with it and made it. So Agassi saves another one and it's back to Deuce. Deuce. In fact, it's Deuce for the first time in this game. They have traded breaks of serve and the set and they're on serve. That's a terrific play from Agassi. It was a good first serve that gave him the short ball. And then he played an extremely aggressive approach shot, which became a winner. You see how much he covers this short ball, really gets under and wraps over it, makes sure there's no two ways about it. This thing is going to get stung. And it was a winning shot. So from two break points down, chance to go even. Set points they were as well. Yeah, Agassi. Boy, he's been positive when he's had to be, Agassi. Five games on it. You know, he's come to the net. He's played the big points. He's, uh, I mean, a championship match like this is going to be decided by the opportunities and the way people play the big points. Lipton Championships begins on Sunday. The top men will be there, and they'll be joined by the top women, Steffi Groff and Arantxa sanchez Vicario, and the rest of those WTA Tour players. That is four aces now. You see, you would think that in a, a Sampras Agassi match, Sampras would have been into the net a lot more than Agassi, but he respects the Agassi ground game and passing shot game too much. Agassi's been more effective. And that's why, I mean, Pete's getting killed here on his serve. Can't get to the net without it. Sampras is still under 50% on first serves. That's 47% against 67 from Agassi. Agassi's not going for the same amount of pace on the serve, though. He's that, not uh, looking to come in behind no. him. No. He did. So he's going to miss more serves than Agassi misses. 15 all, second serve, five games all. That's a push. He didn't hit that one. He tried to steer it. That's danger time again. That is what he's doing on that side, isn't he? Trying to guide it instead of just hitting it. 15-30. What a difference a first serve makes. And it's 30 all. 30 all. Well, Boris Becker missed a couple of these in the tiebreaker yesterday behind big first serves, and uh, Sampras makes no mistake about this one. Stands right over the top of the ball. Game point, Sampras. I was just going to make that point, Mary, that you made when uh, Agassi closed in and hit that forehand for the winner. 
Becker missed a couple of those yesterday that cost him the match. He admitted it too that it was because he was looking at Agassi, he'd taken his eye off the ball. Pete Sampras, number one in the world, holds on. Agassi is trailing five games to six. He'll serve after a break to try to get into a tie break. It is terrific weather here in this late afternoon in Southern California. We're in the Coachella Valley, surrounded by the Santa Rosa Mountains. I love this desert area. If you like it, believe me, today would be a sensational day to be here. 6-5, Sampras ahead. Agassi to serve to try to win the set in a tie break. Played point from Sampras. He was patient. He didn't try to go in after he Lovely spanked game. that first big forehand. And he uses the pace of the Agassi return. And he meets the ball, just meets the ball, and then he realizes he's got Sampras. He's got Agassi out of court, goes in and gets the easy overhead. Makes no mistake about this. Sideways to the net. Good look at it. Safely down the middle of the speed. This is a big moment, first set. Love 35-6, second serve. Clip the tape, went over and there are three set points for Sampras. Love 40. Well, he had two on Agassi's last service game, and Agassi got out of them. This is a little tougher situation. Well, I like the way he got out of that one. He was not tentative at all. He believed in himself. Set, Sampras. Seven game two fight. That was too. Agassi with his little steps got over there. He covered a lot of court, but again, it's that running forehand from Sampras that put pay to this first set. A brilliant shot from Agassi, but look at this running forehand. He now takes control of the point. Agassi now has to come up with a brilliant shot from anywhere to make this win, and he hits that. There's the forehand again. He turns a defensive thing into an aggressive shot and then is able to come in behind it, put his opponent under pressure. Agassi does a good job trying to flick the two-hander back cross court, but it hits the tape. First set, Sampras. watching these guys trade forehand. <laughs> Isn't it great? Change direction on that last one and a clean winner. Sampras was back then. Wasn't even close. He lost uh, five sets this year. He's lost one match in total. 
came into this final without the loss of a set. In fact, until yesterday's longest match was 75 minutes worth. 50 minutes that opening set took, seven games to five. Second double fault. <laughs> it was so obvious that he let that ball drop too low. Not that he, did, not that he didn't throw it high enough. He just didn't swing quick enough at it. To the all. Another running forehand here from Sampras is not a bad play from Agassi to get in there, but he just didn't close in close enough. He only got as far as the service line when uh, Sampras was able to get this one across. So look where Agassi is. He's there around about that service line. Just too much angle there for Sampras. Another ace, and Sampras takes the opening game of this second set. He'll change his shirt, and he leads one set to one. Sampras is looking good. He won the first set 7-5. He's got a one game to lead here in the second. That first set wasn't a classic one by any stretch, especially not for Agassi. Coming into the, this final, he'd only uh, been broken three times and hadn't lost a set. He was broken a couple of times in that first set. You can see Sampras had quite a few unforced errors as well, but balanced them out by winners. Agassi did not. Not too far behind, though. It wasn't as clean a set as they played in the first set down in the Australian. But boy, it has this sellout crowd riveted to their seats. Talking the Australian Open, Fred first set won by Sampras, then Agassi came back and broke three times in the, the second. second set. thing you can say uh, uh, here in Indian Wells is that Sampras is not going to be anywhere he isn't anywhere near as tied as he was when he played the final of the Australian remember he had those long matches he was down two sets to love against Larson and he came back and uh, same thing with Courier and just a tough tough two weeks for him <laughs> might have made some unforced errors in that first set but boy you're not going to see a cleaner point play than this one because both players did what they had to do here Agassi has to take one hand off the racket here Sampras sees it but doesn't get the volley away close enough to the line and Agassi gets over there and comes up with a great running forehand oh he, Agassi's had to face a lot of those running forehand those curling cross-court winners have so finally got one back 30. followed it up with his fourth ace Sampras, meanwhile, is on his third racket. Strings up half a dozen of them every day. He's probably done more than that for the final day. Best of five sets. Puts grips on them every day if he's played with them. Agassi holds on and it's one game all in the second set. 
Agassi does a good job here, and this is his trademark. If he gets a good serve in that's got some pace on, he gets a short reply. Nobody does this better than Agassi. Gets that short ball and just leans into it. When they interviewed Agassi yesterday after his match, uh, the, uh, Kathy settled from the ATP to asked him about his clothing. And uh, overwhelmingly, the crowd did not like the clothing. <laughs> no kidding. And, uh, <laughs> and it was quite incredible to see his reaction. We did his, his own informal pull of the stadium. Yeah. One of the clothing designers from, from Nike who helped design this said it was supposed to aggravate people. That was the whole thing. He's supposed to be a dude with the two, Agassi, and that's what they did to him. Oh. Oh. Thirty love. Oh. Talking about rackets just a moment ago, Pete Sampras using the Wilson Pro stuff. It's a, a mid-size frame, quite stiff, and he strings it up very tight. Agassi has his own racket. It's a head, uh, also medium, mid-size. Neither one of them are wide-bodied rackets. Game point here for Sampras. One game all, second set. So he holds on pretty easily. Players are going to change ends and take a break. We will two. It's two games to one Sampras and the first set. It's Pete Sampras with the lead here at the Newsweek. He won the first set 7-5. And then in set two, he's got a 2-1 lead. It hasn't been as good a year this year for Sampras. Hasn't won a title in the three tournaments he's played. Might reach a final in his last couple of events. He's lost 16 sets in 17 matches. He's struggled a little bit, but uh, Pete Sampras quite happy with the position he's in. He had a big lead as far as number one was concerned. And he's still at the top of the hill. Nevertheless, did get to the final of the Australian, losing to Agassi there, and then Todd Martin beat him in Memphis. He had match points, though, against Martin there in the semis and lost. Oh. Pulls that one, yanks it wide, Agassi. Sampras, after losing that match against Martin, you know, he was up a set. He'd won the first set, and in the tiebreak, he had his chances. And when he lost those match points, he said afterwards, it was it was a nightmare. Well, his tiebreak record this year is not good. <laughs> it was 0 and 6 coming into this coming event. Into this tournament, that's right. Balanced by the fact that last year, and he stayed number one in the world for the entire year, first man since Ivan Lendl to do that, he had a great tie-break record. 15 all. Oh. Oh. The difference right now in this particular game is that Agassi has been going for the winners and he doesn't have the margin of error on his shots that Sampras is showing us at the moment. Sampras is hitting the ball solidly, but he's getting a fair bit of flight on the ball. He's getting a little bit of flight. It's a much safer shot. Careful here, Agassi. This is a very important game for him. Otherwise, this second set slips away. It's a long way home from there. Set. 
second serve. Break point. Oh! So much for playing safe. Yeah, I think Sampras uh, wishes he'd have chosen. Look, he takes a couple of steps back here and just to plays this one safe. But look, it gets right in. It bounces before it gets to the service line. That's Agassiz's bread and butter. Oh. Oh. Missed it, so here's another break point chance for Sampras. Yeah, Fred, of course, he should have got it a little deeper, but when a guy hits a shot like Agassi just hit, that's the time you've got to say, listen, if you can hit that one, it's well, yours. It's true, yeah, but he hits it all the time off that shot. My point is that if he got it another 10 feet deeper, he wouldn't have been able to make that type of shot. Like that one. There is the break for Sampras. He has won the first set and he's ahead. By three games to one now in the second. So he has broken this thing open. He has been broken once in the match so far. That was in the first set. Agassi was the first one to draw blood in the match, and then he in turn was broken and broken for a second time as Sampras won the first set 7 5. Now he has 3 1 in the second. Agassi didn't like the call, but I thought it was a good call. Sampras has had 11 break point chances. He's broken three times. This is a huge game for Sampras. If he can win this and hold and consolidate and get to 4 1, then Agassi really has to start to uh, think about changing what he's doing. <laughs> Sampras is trying to win this tournament for the second time in a row. He won it last year. He's the holder. Hasn't been that successful out in the desert, actually, until last year. The last man who did that was Becker. Well, he's gone out wide. That's the ninth ace. He's gone out wide to the forehand, and then he puts the heater on this one. Look at that. Good shoulder turn. Just basically the back is facing. And then look at this. And then he starts to rotate the shoulders. Keeps the head up. Keeps the arm up. And then comes out with a good follow through. 126 mile an hour that ace was. That's his fastest serve in the match today. It's as fast as he served all week. Point to Sampras. I wonder if Agassi's going to start going away from the Sampras forehand. Oh, I really think he's playing to it too much. Sampras, time and again, has come up with the running cross court, you know, forehand winners. That's been the the one stroke that has opened it up for him, isn't it? Because he he plays to that. He plays to give the top spinner to the backhand oh. and hoping that Agassi will go down to the forehand. Then he gets a little bit more speed on that forehand cross court, and Agassi can't handle it. A Sampras and Agassi both, I think, think thought that Sampras had just scored his third ace of this game. Me too. But it was called out. Game point. I think Sampras was waiting for a call on the baseline, which he Sampras didn't get. Nevertheless, the netted volley does win in the game, and it's four games to one. Sampras players are going to change ends with Sampras ahead of set and a break at the Newsweek. This was the 14th time Sampras and Agassi had played each other. Sampras barely led the head-to-head 7-6. -head the differences between the two were striking. As Sampras once said, quote, It was remarkable how different we were. Our personalities, our approach to tennis, our strengths. Everything from Pete's low-key manner and big serve to Andre's more extroverted persona and great return of serve created the stuff of which great tennis rivalries are made brilliant contrast. We now return to Tennis Channel's broadcast of the 1995 Indian Wells men's singles final between Pete Sampras and Andre Agassi.
Sampras is ahead in this match. He won the first set and he's up 4-1. That's one break. He is virtually certain to lose the number one spot to Andre Agassi this spring. And we asked him about it. He really deserves it. He's won the last two majors, beat me in the Australian Open. Uh, but I look at who's number one at the end of the year, in my mind, had the best year and had the best results in the Grand Slams. And, and the whole summer, not playing it last year, really, really hurt me in a lot of ways. And uh, um, so I'm, I'm kind of... I could, I, I could accept it if it, if it does happen because I've won a, a lot. I've won this tournament the Lipton and the Rome and did well at the French. So. But I'm not conceding it so easily. I mean, he's, he's got to win and play well. And so we'll have to see what happens over the next you know, couple months. He had uh, bad luck last year, Sampras, as he was talking about there last summer. As we already mentioned, he was out for six weeks with injuries. He's had quite a few injuries, hasn't he? Had uh, hip flexor problems. <laughs> Foot problems. And then remember when he first won the US Open, Mary had uh, shin splints at that time, wasn't it? Last changeover, Sampras gave uh, another racket to be restrung to his brother Gus. Gus is here, he's earning his keep, he's taking the rackets to get restrung while interim coach Paul Anacone watches, charts the match. Fifth eighth for Agassi. He's been beating up on the Sampras backhand this game, and it's paid paid off well. 40 zip. Clip the line on that one. So game to Agassi. Sampras will serve here at 4-2. Agassi trying to uh, whip himself into shape to get a break of serve here. Crowd a little quiet after that first set win from Sampras, and now a break of serve. They'd like to see this one go the distance. And that's just one little mental lapse, and we can be all even again here. These two guys just uh, can at times uh, let loose and miss a few in a row. He's only lost four points on serve this set, Sampras. Watch out here. And again, very lucky with that net cord. one there from Sampras his 10th ace he's still under 50 percent but he's been pretty effective especially off the first serve it's not bad serving though 10 aces and you're serving at 47 percent then he's running nearly 90 percent and he's uh, got it over 50 percent he's still got to get a little bit better on second serves but whilst that first serve is going for him so Agassi saying hey it's not my lucky day Sampras had a couple of those that one uh, was just an inch away from a gold watch and chain. <laughs> Point for five two. There's the return and a fine volley from Sampras as he puts pressure on the Agassi forehand. He comes up with the goods, but then he says, hey, here we go, right on top of the tape. Come close though, and he's still got a game point. This is not Agassi's forte, but he's in dire straits at the moment, so he does another shot, another approach down to the Sampras forehand. This time he gets the forehand down the line and makes the backhand volley. Not a great one, but he had the angle, and the angle was good enough to win it. What was he trying? A drop volley for. Easy passing shot for Agassi. Well, that goes into the category of concentration, I feel. He's been going. He hasn't played a drop volley all day. And he has time to make this one. And that one is a closet shot. That's back there. That is giving Agassi a gift to get him back in. 
to this service game. Deuce. One twenty five mile an hour attempt. way out of court half volley clean winner game point Sampras coming up Agassi came up with a tremendous effort here though on the passing shot against most players that would have been a winner that was a great stretch from Sampras to pick that one up this is great stuff love it <laughs> Sampras holds on, he's got a 5-2 lead. One break, I guess he will serve after a break. Sampras won the first set at the Newfield. It has been a great week of tennis out here, hasn't it? We were just saying that there's been some spectacular happenings out here. Stefan Edberg playing so well. He really turned things around in his match with Thomas Muston played brilliantly in the semi-final. Not well enough to beat Pete Sampras though. And then you had Becker, former number one, and Agassi in the other semi-final. Really a dream matchup. Oh, oh yeah. I really I think this is the best weekend of tennis I've seen from Sampras all year long. I don't think he played this well in Australia. I mean, he played brilliantly to beat Jim Courier, and then he took out Michael Chang as well. But now, this is the kind of stuff that we've been watching from Pete in the last year or two. Oh. That's pretty impossible what he just did there. Fifteen all. I took to heart the point you made, Fred, when you talked about that Australian Open. You know, he takes out Lawson, but he's down two sets to love, and then a match that uh, was really the most remarkable match in memory with Courier. Oh, he's a lot fresher this week. Oh. 30-15. A this... emotional match, that one. Down two sets, he comes back, and then he's down a set to Chang, and he comes back. And that takes it out of you, no matter how strong you are. This is not over this match yet though They're only uh, one lapse here and uh, it's only one service break Sampras at 5 2 but there's only the one break there. But he is looking good. Now. what Agassi's done on the deuce court. He's been out there 39% out to the forehand, down the tee 51% and at the body 10% of the time. He respects that big forehand from oh. Oh. Sampras. He doesn't go out wide that much because he does not uh, serve and volley. He's not looking for the serve and volley. Oh. A couple of real good looking backhands from Agassi in that game. I think Sampras had been doing a pretty good job of hitting high looping shots to Agassi's backhand and drawing errors. But when Agassi can ride over the top of the ball, he's in control. Still, Sampras serves out the second set right here. Yeah, Sampras, I think, uh, let that one go a little bit because he's so confident on serve. He said, I, I give my whole serve on two sets to love up. And that's the reason the last game he sort of let slip. 11 aces for Agus uh, for Sampras rather. Agassi has had one break of serve in the match, three chances to break. When you're serving this well, uh, like Sampras, and we said this match was going to be Sampras if he could serve this well, and uh, his service percentages have not been great, but boy, he's got the big serve in when he's needed it. And when you have that luxury, you can and you have that service break you can sort of lay off for a game if you believe that you're going to win your serve and that one he thought he had it again. I did too. I did too. 
going to ask Steve Ulrich in the chair about that one because that really did look good. No overall phone. Who can blame him? 121 mile an hour steamer. Look. Sure didn't look wide. No what? way. He was ready to go back to serve. Well, I'm just going to note on my little score pad here that uh, service ace that possibly would have given him a set point because now he's uh, got to come through and win it now. Would have given him three set love. points yep. instead of 40 love. It's 30 15. <laughs> Thank God he went for it again. That one he survived and he's got set points here. A couple of them. Boy, that's a gutsy play because the Boy, game before he played a terrible look at he's got his hand he over wants his a towel, face. I think. Except, Wants the towel at the back of the court, but boy, uh, Agassi nearly won this one. Uh, there's the drop volley, but Agassi nearly wins this on what we call a dead net court because he hits the tape and doesn't give Sampras much room to play that shot at all. Big thing for Sampras is that he's got set point. Oh. Oh. At 40 15. more even when he misses his first serve today Sampras is at 50 percent success rate on his second serve and that is not easy against the best returner in tennis the man you're looking at now ace and Sampras has a two set to love lead in the championship match against Andre Agassi it's the final match of the Newsweek from Indian World. Agassi to serve first point of the third set trailing to Seth to love. He's already faced so much pressure against serve Agassi. <laughs> the Australian Open remember Sampras was only able to earn four breakpoint chances against Agassi serve over four sets and only broke twice here two sets are gone and Agassi's already faced 11 breakpoints it's a lot harder to swing big on the Sampras return if you're having so much trouble struggling with your own serve you got to worry about about your your own self and then it's hard to go up against the big boy here we showed you how Andre Agassi had been serving to Sampras on the deuce court going down the tee more times and uh, as he does against Becker yesterday in the semi-final he likes that kick serve he likes the one out wide to the backhand so it opens up the court for the big forehand hasn't served any straight at uh, Sampras on the uh, Ad court. Yeah, I, I really think in this set, Agassi will try to work over the Sampras backhand. Sampras' footwork seems a little bit slower on the backhand side. Sometimes he's not set up. That's why he's been pulling off some of his shots, not getting under them and behind them. Game point. Another yeah. one. Agassi one game to love in the third set, but down First two game. sets to love to the top player in the world. Yes. Eleven and a half thousand people can be accommodated here. <laughs> Yeah. 
There are some of those kids. That they're making a big effort in the sport of tennis now to get more people playing. Part of the Tennis Industry Association initiative, the ATP Tour is very much involved with that, and of course the USTA. That's number 13 for Sanford. That's the part that the, the top guys like the most, Pete and Andre and all the other guys, that, you know, that when they are asked to give back to the game, they most like to give back to the kids. Well, they've had a lot of tennis out here. They've had the challenges. They had the finals of the women's event last week. They've had everything. And in a month's time, they get the world and national senior events here. So it's not only kids. The Phoenix Challenge Love 50, they're out here in April. I'm coming back for a couple of days of that. There's tennis all over the valley out here. Or he loves Sampras. He's trailing one game to love in the third. Up two sets to love. One game all third set, two sets to love Sampras. That second set from Sampras was, uh, as I said, I, I, I hadn't seen him play a set that good, that good looking and that clean in a long, long time, at least not this year. If he can keep up that kind of tennis, he can win this in straights, and I didn't think anyone could beat Agassi in, in three straight sets. Not the way he's been playing this way. Yeah. Another miss by Agassi. That first set was very competitive, but a little ragged when you, when you look at the numbers. But for Sampras in that second set, you see Agassi talking to himself about his own numbers. He knows how many unforced errors he's been making. And Sampras has been so clean, barely losing points on serve. Yeah, that's, that's the best returner. That forehand there, Mary, is a typical example. He has not missed those this week at all. <laughs> A strategy though Cliff you have a look at that rally there Sampras is keeping that ball in play it's not like Boris Becker trying to hit Agassi off the court from the baseline Sampras is quite happy to play with Agassi from the baseline and Agassi's now having to generate his own pace which he's not used to doing and then when he does it to, to Sampras's forehand then Sampras comes up with more pace on the forehand there it is just in play Three-quarter stuff all the time. Agassi's got to come up with the winners. He does it, but he's not doing it enough times at the moment. It reminds me, Fred, as you are watching this great rivalry between these two, it'll be the rivalry of the 90s and the replay, of the Connors borg effort, where Borg beat Connors so many times by just doing exactly what Sampras is doing now to Agassi. <laughs> Just basically what you just described, Fred. He would stay back, he'd run everything down and just make Connors go for winner after winner after winner and eventually his game broke down. 30 all. and he's got a game point after being down love 30 in this game Shot a couple of points there from Sampra, so he will change ends down 2 1 in the third set. One of the great recording artists of our time right now, Seal, is also a very, very big tennis fan. The man from Great Britain is watching this final, and he's with Luke Jensen right now in the stands. Here, here I am with Seal. Man, are you enjoying the match so far? 
Yeah, it's great, really entertaining. I mean, they're both playing some amazing tennis, but Pete looks like he just can't lose today. Yeah, you were down here earlier this morning. You've been watching Becker. Were you serving some heat? <laughs> well, <laughs> hardly. I mean, it was 7 o'clock in the morning. You're not going to get much out of me at that time. <laughs> but it was good fun to play on the center court. It's a lot bigger. I mean, you're probably used to playing in smaller courts. Did you have a problem with the distance and the uh, tracking all the balls out of the stands and things like that? No, not really. Just had a problem hitting them. That's all. <laughs> we all have a problem hitting them. It's a, it's a problem everybody has. That's right, Luke. Thank you, Luke. That is third set that you're watching now. Two sets to love Sampras. Double for Sampras. He's had 14 aces. That's his third double, fault. Third double. Seal is one deep dude, by the way. He watched Becker play and lose to Andre Agassi yesterday and then spent a, a large part of the night speaking with, with Becker, and they can both get very heavy. Enjoyed it. Well, Mary, you had lunch nice. with him. You can, you can tell everybody. <laughs> Come on. You, you it's can, one of the great lunches home. of all time. He went for that drop volley again. He got burned on it once, but now for the second time, he's made it against the Agassi foot speed. He just kind of dumps it over Sampras. Usually, you're used to him really sticking a volley, but that one's pretty low, so he went for a nice feathery touch. And Agassi didn't miss it by that much. I mean, he got to the ball, just couldn't control it once he was there. Tried to chicken wing it down the line and missed. Well, that was a casual one, a tough one to play straight at the chest coming in on that one. But Sampras has got to keep his mind on the job. He's up two sets to one here. He just, uh, in a match like this, he just can't relax. Two sets to love. He won the first two sets. <coughs> Ace. 40. 14 for Sampras. Make that 15 now. And he's got a game point. Finally, a let court helps Agassi. He'd gotten the wrong end of those all match long. The crowd go crazy here with this one, too. They want to see this match go to at least four sets. This one, look, it bounces back midcourt. Agassi hits the backhand away from the body. There he looks at this coming at you, and there away from Sampras, and that gets him back into the game. Running forehand topspin low for a clean winner, and Agassi can hardly believe it. But he should believe it because Sampras has been yeah, super that uh, running forehand department. Look, he played an unbelievable half volley. Then he's got to backtrack and get behind the baseline and then get balanced to play a topspin lob. We've been used to seeing him hit cross court forehands or down the line forehands. That's the first one he's thrown up in the air. <laughs> Dangerous play again from him there, going for the drop volley, but it worked and he has won the game. It's two games all. His tactic there, Cliff, I believe, must be talking to Paul Anacone. Paul Anacone used to play a lot of little drop volleys, and uh, he's probably told him that you can, if you can get that one and tire Agassi out, because Agassi's got to keep trying to chase those, and this match goes to four or five sets. He's going to be one tired cowboy out there. As the percentages on serve, Sampras got his up above 50% now. But look at the winners there that uh, winners have forced errors. Two sets to love, Sampras, two games all. And now 15 all in this game. <laughs> 90 
26 mile an hour slider. Eight aces for Agassi. 15 for Sampras. As he wins his game, you'll hear the fans really pull for him. They want more match. They don't want this decided in straights. Game point. Oh. 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 And go to Agassi. They'll change in on serve that 3-2. With Agassi. Pete Sampras trying to hold on to the number one spot in the world. Yes. Sampras two sets to love. Agassi has a 3-2 lead. There have not been any breaks of serve in the third set yet. Pete Sampras' service direction to the deuce court. He's had a lot of success with the, the aces. The percentages have gone up a little bit. 33% out wide to the forehand. 67. None straight at the body. That's an interesting observation. 67% with the heater down the tee. Excellent serving percentage from Sampras so far in this set. But he'd, he'd been down around the 50% mark over the first two. This is what happens out the wide. So he's attacking the backhand side, the two-fisted side of Sampras, um, of Agassi, I'm sorry, two-handed side of Agassi. And uh, probably one of the reasons he probably remembers that big shot that won that. And there's, he's staring at a woman who is who's trying to not to draw atten attention to herself, so, yeah. 15 low. <laughs> Yeah, so good distribution there when he serves to the ad court. That one into the forehand side, but as you pointed out, Fred, it's been pretty even. There are your first serve percentages, as you can see in the third set. They both upped them dramatically. They will obviously go down somewhat, though, as the set goes on. That's only a uh, couple of games into this third set. I'm very surprised if they're serving at 75% at the end of the set. Thirty fifteen. One of the historic matches that these two played was the first time that Sampras won the U.S. Open. That was in 1990. He beat Andre Agassi in that final in straight sets. A big surprise to a lot of people. Six four six three six two on a hard court. That's the best tennis I've seen from Sampras that particular year when he got to the quarterfinals of the US Open. He was on such a roll and that ball looked like a football to him. He just couldn't miss a shot. He beat Yvonne Lindell, then John Macro, and then Agassi. En route to his first Grand Slam. Win. Oh boy. That's 16 of them. Twice as many as Agassi. Even in the third set, Agassi had to wait a couple of years before he won his first Grand Slam and of all places it was at Wimbledon. It was the last thing that anyone expected since then he's won on everything except the French championships. He hopes to do that this year. But he's been in the final there twice. He got it. 15 low. Boy, oh boy, we talked about running forehands as being Sampras' strength. It has been. It's won a lot of points during this match. Agassi is a little quicker than he has been getting over and covering that. Then he says, hey, if you can do that, well, watch this from me. <laughs> running forehand, that one is just too low. 30 low. Tell you what, that would have been pretty close. That would have been another inch higher. They had it right into the uh, 
the wooden frame that protects the uh, the net post. Base. That's nine for Agassi. Sampras got 16. Well, serve and volley, a little bit of a uh, change of tactics there from Agassi. You don't see him do that very often, but uh, he's desperate. He's down two sets to love. He's got to come up with the goods to get back into this match to win this third set. Talking Grand Slam results, uh, Andre Agassi holds two right now. If he can win the French Championships and Wimbledon make it four in a row, it won't be a Grand Slam. It'll be the first time that anybody's done it. That's four in a row since Rod Laver. And he won his second Grand Slam. Love. Seemed like a long time ago now. Yeah, again, though, Mary's had to create his own pace on that last one. That's uh, Sampras being very patient from the baseline. That one was a little shorter and it sucked Agassi into going for the big one. Deuce. It's pretty hard to weather yep. the storm the way Sampras has been willing to do. Yep. He's he broken broke another string. On string. That one. <laughs> So this will be his fifth racket. Yeah, but you've got to say, hey, that's what he says, two yeah. broken strings and two winners. He said, how can you be that? That's tough. Everything the dead courts <laughs> have got against him and off two broken strings, he pops this and goes, and Andre just cannot get this ball back into play. You see Sampras running into the net in case he had to have hit another shot because all the tension is gone from his strings, but he didn't need it. It was a winner for the second time, and that's got to get a little exasperating for Andre Agassi. He Race kisses the racket. Sampras. <laughs> nice. Gives that a little kiss. Good stuff now. It really is. Coast to coast coverage of the court from yes. both players. Finally decided by Agassi at the net. Again, Agassi is going to something he doesn't particularly like to do. He'd rather rumble from the baseline against anybody, but Sampras is basically saying to Agassi, look, I'm handling your heat. So he does a good job of stepping in behind the short one and putting the pressure from the net. Deuce. <laughs> Oh. Missed that return. It's game point now for Agassi, who had 40 love in this game. Sampras has 46 winners against 26 unforced errors. That's the first time you've really seen him try to go and add a little bit of extra to that uh, Agassi serve, going for broke on that return. <laughs> That's not what Agassi wants to do, serve and volley. A bad thing to mix it up every now and then, though, Fred, is it? No, I agree. It's not a bad thing, but if he continues to do that, he's got to mix it up. He's got to do something to win this third set, something a little different. That's different. Deuce. Oh. I guess he was waiting for a call. Sampras is uh, asking Steve Ulrich to uh, tell the crowd to. Be quiet. I guess he was thinking for a moment that that might have been out, but Sampras missed the next ball anyway. 
Oh. He misses that one, and so Agassi maintains the lead in the third set. He's got four games to three. Lampras to serve. No breaks here in the third set yet. Agassi leads four games to three in the third set. Sampras has a two set to love lead. It's the championship match here tonight. After this match is over, stay tuned to ESPN for our March Madness Tournament special. First in a series of shows that takes you inside the NCAA tournament pairings with analysis, news, and notes. That's up, ne that's up next here, 11 p.m. Eastern, 8 o'clock on the West Coast. Pretty solid serving from Sampras when he has not faced a break point in 11 straight serve games. He's been broken once in the match, and that was in the first set. And he came back and broke back and then broke again to win the set. Go. Put a little bit off that one, Agassi. Didn't try and go for the blistering forehand. He goes and just rolls that one cross court, covers the ball. Uses the pace of shot off the volley, just blocks that return there. And what's this one? Just there and doesn't try to do too much with it, just creates the angle, a little bit of topspin inside that service line. And Sampras has taken a little bit off his first serves in this game, and Agassi has been able to jump on them. That was a mere 105, and Agassi had a good look at it and took a full swing. Let's see if Agassi, if Sampras adds a little more heat to his first delivery now. He did, and he got it right in the right spot. That's where he's been going a big percentage of the time. We showed you that graphic out there on the big points. He likes the one down the tee, but he knows that Sampras, that uh, Agassi is looking for that one on big points. On that occasion, it went out to the backhand side. Yeah, you can't be a pattern server against Agassi. No. He's too good. Boy, that was just all speed, 127. That's his quickest speed on serve of the week. Becker had a 131 mile an hour, and Michael Steak got up to 133, but that's... Sampras is biggest of the week. Game point. that one up. here's a break point for Agassi well played well thought out point Agassi was a little more patient yeah, in that Agassi. rally so was Sampras for that matter but this is the first break point that Agassi has had for a long long time since the first set
114 mile an hour serve, although truthfully, I think if he serves it out wide there, it doesn't register quite as fast as it does when you serve it down the tee. Look at this one. He took nothing off that serve. Deuce. Sampras wants to finish this in three sets. You know that. And Agassi is doing everything in his power to get back into this match. 124 mile an hour first serve. Game point Sampras. Game Sampras. Oh, that's some solid serving when he needed it. He was getting burned by just bending them in, Sampras, and he really did. He turned up the volume in a big, big way. Four games all and two sets to love for Sampras. Sampras leads the head to head seven matches to six. The last time in the final of the Australian Open won by Agassi in four. I guess he's just bending them in now. That was an 89 mile an hour. <laughs> That's what's caused the problems today. That rolling top spinner from Sampras, three quarter court, then the slice. Agassi again trying to create his own pace. Fifteen all. Agassi hasn't been near as lethal today as he was against Becker. Different type of match also. Becker went for more oh. stuff than Sampras has been going for. He got it. Sampras is challenging Agassi's consistency. As you said, Fred, by just getting a lot of balls back, he has another one. But I guess he was up to it. Look at this. Clips the line. The last two winners, he's hit behind Sampras. those sort of floating yeah. backhands where Agassi has to try to yeah I think Ag the slices you know when the slice and the top spin that mixture I think he has a little more problem with the little slice one just no pace on that one at all He holds on. Sampras will serve, but he's trailing here in the third set. On serve. Two sets to love. Sampras. Five games to four. Agassi in the third. He is trying to battle his way to number one in the world. His dad, Mike, is having a battle of his own. For more on that, here's Luke Jensen. So much is talked about Pete Sampras and his coach Tim Gully having some problems, maybe hurting his chances in the last couple of weeks. Andre Agassi learned in Philadelphia a couple of weeks ago that his dad is, has to undergo uh, open heart surgery. After this match, he's going directly to LA and is going to be at his uh, dad's side during this uh, trying time. Thanks, Luke. This is Sampras serving, trailing in the third set. On serve, though. Nearly snuck back in, but stayed wide. A very solid serve percentage from Pete Sampras here in the third set. Too much 
punch out. Oh! That couldn't have been a bigger point for Agassi, and Boris Becker gave him two of these in the tiebreak yesterday in the semis. Becker had it all lined up, his point to win, just like Agassi. Agassi got a little anxious on that one, tried to really cane it, go for too much. He didn't have to spank it that hard. No, he'd love that one back. Boy. The team all would be feeling a lot better right now. Oh! oh! serving pretty meagerly Sampras in terms of first serve percentages but he has turned that around in the third set as we showed you for the match he's now right up around the 60 percent the first set he was only at 50 percent makes a big difference to Pete Sampras's game when he can up his first serve percentages so we're even here in the third set I think about Andre Agassi's father, you know, these two have known each other from the time they were little kids. And uh, they've gone through so much together and apart, and here they are, both of them facing real grown-up problems. In a very public place. I think they're both handling it pretty well. Everyone talks about how, what a casual demeanor Pete Sampras owns, and how he's pretty lackadaisical and everything, but this guy's actually got real bad ulcers, Pete Sampras. He spent the, the, the entire Australian Open Sampras eating pasta and mashed potatoes. <laughs> Anything to keep his stomach, his belly quiet. 15 love. <laughs> Fifteen all. Pete Sampras has said that people see Pete Sampras and think that he's lackadaisical and casual. He said, I work hard on my tennis, that's for sure. I get a lot of pleasure out of beating people. He <laughs> does look lackadaisical at times. He compares himself with golfer Fred Couples, <laughs> who sort of has the same outside image. <laughs> Great talent. 15-30, look out. Second double fault of this match. At five games all in the third set, down two sets to love. Crisis time here for Agassi. Oh, there's another forehand error. That time from Sampras at a crucial stage would have given him a couple of break points boy he wants that one back again he set it up with some brilliant play it was a great return from Agassi at the start off the returns Sampras banked a big forehand then finished up missing the easy one <laughs> game point Agassi I should say Sampras did because he had hit the tape one of those shots and that really kept him in the point. Without that, he would have been dead. Yeah, the ball was going out when he struck this backhand and now it forces Agassi into the net, which is a position he's not used to being. And uh, Sampras knew exactly what to do, made him play the volley and was all over that short backhand. Deuce. Steve Ulrich. They'll play two. 
They will play two because Sampras got it back. Had it been out of reach, it would have been point Agassi. One hundred percent sure that was good. You put your life on that. Yeah. You would. Yeah, regular. Oh, I think so. He he challenges Steve Ulrich in the chair on that one because his, his attitude is, man, that was struck so hard and so close to that baseline. How can he make such a huge overall? It's five all in the well, third. It's deuce. Steve Ulrich has, you know, he has a history of doing this, oh. I think, and that's where, you know, some of the chair umpires uh, like to do this sort of stuff. Some of them don't. Steve Ulrich has a history in that department. For what it's worth, I think he was yeah, right. I think the call, the overall call that he made was the correct call. The question is, should he have overruled anything that close at this stage? And here, Sampras, in any case, has the break point. play but a clean winner gutsy shot gutsy shot if he misses Jesus. this he's history he's back in the showers if he misses this particular point here thumps this forehand gets the slice back in look at this if he plays the chip volley or if he just punches this volley Sampras is going to run it down so Agassi says hey you're not going to get this baby <laughs> Point chance for Sampras. That bolo forehand, by the way, put that yeah, one in the don't Sampras. try this at home category unless your name is Andre. Watch this. Watch Sampras here. He struggles to get this one. He knows where this bolo forehand's going. He's set over there. Look, you can see the ball come into the screen. That was a great shot. And he's over there ready for this reply. Perfectly balanced, not under any pressure. <laughs> in a different league this you're watching the number one and the number two Sampras players in, in the world they're battling it out for the number one spot in the world on the IBM ATP tour computer and they're playing like it it's 6-5 to Sampras You're about to watch Pete Sampras serve for the match. He has a two-setter love lead and 6-5. They have both agreed to play Davis Cup for the USA against Italy in the second round of this year's competition. Here is Sampras serving for the match. It. Holding nothing back on yep. that return. This match has been a matter of inches, though, and the inches have gone Pete Sampras's way so far today. Serving for it, Agassi has just missed by a fraction of an inch on a lot of the strokes. Sampras has been a little lucky with the net cords. 15 all. But he's going to make him work for it. It was a little bit like that return of serve in the tiebreak in Australia in the third set, Fred, when he was down. He knows set exactly point. where this is going. Look at Sampras. He just knows that it's coming down the tee on the big points, and uh, he was ready. I said, I said Sampras there, and Agassi is looking for it. I'm getting excited. This has been terrific stuff up here. 15 all. <laughs> Two points from the championship for Pete Sampras. 
Good move that one. He didn't go wide. He didn't give uh, Sampras any angle. Sampras, uh, I mean, Agassi picks that ball up very early. Sampras served it straight at the body on that occasion. Turnable serve, and that gives Pete Sampras championship point. Well, when he had a set point in Australia, he went to the forehand. He's been burnt a couple of times on the forehand. See where this big one goes. to the backhand side he's attacked that three, side all five. night a repeat for Pete Sampras here at the Newsweek as he wins his second championship here in a row and Cliff they say but hey, we've had some problems with our sport. This is prime time tennis and it's on prime time TV. This has been fantastic. And you've seen the best two players go at it. Sampras wins it. He's still the number one player in the world. And you're going to watch this rivalry for a few years to come. I'd first like to uh, congratulate Pete on playing well uh, today. And Uh, you know, every time we step on the court, if I have to be my best to beat this guy, and if I'm 98% and he's 100, I look like I'm about 60%. So uh, he's here today, and uh, I'd like to thank Charlie and everybody involved in making this tournament so great for the players. From the players' perspective, it's a complete success, and uh, it's a place I love to come back to. And I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to win it this year. I've been in the finals twice, and you know, I try again, uh, try again next year. But, uh, Uh, and I'd also like to say, you know, uh, tomorrow, since the cameras are still rolling here, tomorrow uh, my father is uh, going in for open heart surgery, and I just want to tell you that I love you, Dad, and I'll see you there tomorrow, okay? Yeah! Uh, and, and don't worry, Dad, I'll kick Pete's ass next week. <laughs> back-to-back -back champion, number one in the world, Pete Sampras, a great job once again. And, and back in the accounting department, we've got a check for $255,000. You're the man. Uh, well, uh, first of all, I'd like to, to say a couple words about Andre. You know, he's someone that I have a lot of respect for, and he has won the last two major tournaments, and you know, he deserves to be number one. And, uh, but it's a long year, and, and hopefully uh, we battle for the next 10 years. It's something that's really great for the game, and I'm just happy to be a part of that. Also to uh, Charlie Pasquale and his staff. Uh, it seems like this tournament just gets better every every year, and I look forward to coming back for many years. And so, and also you, and also to my uh, my family. Believe it or not, is is here. They're not, not that nervous. My brother and my sister and my mom and my buddy Paul Anico and Tachinen for all their help this week. And also, uh, everyone from the ATP Tour, Jay Wayne and Richmond, seem like uh, the tour also is getting better every year and year, and the attendance uh, this week has been great, and without you guys, you know, this, this game's not gonna work, so thanks for coming out, and I'll see you guys next year. Thanks. <laughs>
As often happened when he played Agassi, Sampras had brought out his best tennis at just the right moments. At the same time, Agassi's father, Mike, was about to have open heart surgery. Right after losing to Sampras, Andre visited Mike at the UCLA Medical Center. From his bed, strapped to a series of machines, Mike Agassi mumbled these words, hit more to Pete's backhand. Agassi took that advice to heart. Two weeks later, payback time. Agassi beat Pete in the finals of the equally prestigious tournament in Key Biscayne. More importantly, with that win, Agassi took over the number one ranking from Sampras. We hope you've enjoyed this Indian Wells Classic. I'm Brian Weber.